Welcome to In the Know with the Stafford SO, a podcast presented by the Stafford County Sheriff's Office in Virginia that brings you the stories of the men and women who work tirelessly to keep our community safe each day. With In the Know with the Stafford SO, you'll find out what life is really like behind the law enforcement badge. Thank you for listening and thank you for your support. Hello and welcome to In the Know with the Stafford SO. I am Kathy Volbrecht, your host for today. I am very excited to welcome Sergeant Carol Burgess to the podcast today. Sergeant Burgess is with the Crime Prevention Unit, and we are going to talk about that unit and everything they do in just a second, but I wanted to give you a little background about Sergeant Burgess. She's been with the Sheriff's Office for about 18 years. Um, She has held positions in the Courts Division as a School Resource Officer and as a Patrol Supervisor. She has been named the Law Enforcement Officer of the Year and also School Resource Officer of the Year, and she recently completed her Crime Prevention Specialist Certification, and she is only one of about 288 active crime prevention specialists who work to keep Virginia safe and at the forefront of the practice of crime prevention. She is also a veteran of the U.S. Army. Sergeant Burgess, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you. (laughs) You have the perfect background for crime prevention. It's almost like you two were made for each other. I totally agree. (laughs) Awesome. Well, let's start out by talking about um, what drew you, with all your years of experience with law enforcement and the sheriff's office, what drew you to the crime prevention unit in the first place? Well, you know, after working in the schools for almost 11 years as a school resource officer, um, and I just felt like being tied to the community um, because the schools are a part of our community. So when the crime prevention unit um, position opened up, um, I, you know, you know, put in for it and, you know, to be offered a position and then actually start working in it. It was pretty much to me, it's almost like now I'm still in the community, but in the community even more and knowing the kids at the schools. So bringing the schools and the community together, the parents, um, the senior citizens. So um, it just like almost just, I just embraced it. Um, so it just gave me the opportunity to now, instead of being in the schools, going from school to school, just be out in the communities um, even more. And being out there, a lot of people I already knew from the parents, um, to the kids, so being in their environment, um, it that's what I felt like. Okay, I just felt like it was just natural to me, and it is natural. So you really have that unique connection with the community because you know the the schools, you know the kids, you know their parents, but you also are out there working with businesses, with churches. So let's talk about what crime prevention does um, out there on an everyday basis. Okay. Um, crime prevention, basically, our goal is in engaging the community first and foremost. Um, it's about leading um, and building that trust within the communities. And out of that, we have three programs. We have Neighborhood Watch, Worship Watch, and Business Watch. Um, and right now, we basically have three deputies that are assigned to those individual watches. I'm in charge of basically Neighborhood Watch. Um, Deputy Curtis, he's responsible for Worship Watch, and Deputy Shannon is responsible for Business Watch. And with that, it's bringing our churches, our neighborhoods, and our businesses together um, to be a part of a, where we have neighbors looking out for neighbors, businesses looking out for businesses, and also of our worship leaders, basically our worship communities looking out for each other. But all three basically combine as one um, within the community and make up that community. So overall, it's it's a, a huge community watch program. Um, so again, it's, it's about just building that trust and then just basically sharing information. If we receive information, we're able to share with our communities um, through our, our outlets, through social media. Um, if it's something for the entire community, we'll share with them. If it's something for our businesses, um, we'll, we'll share directly with our business communities. Um, but again, it's about just building trust and engaging our community as one. So with all the work that you do with the community, let's talk about how COVID has impacted that because it's so important for crime prevention uh, to be out there talking with our citizens, working hand in hand with them on a daily basis. But then we had COVID hit and we're being told, hey, stay away from people, you know, and it's for the health and safety. So how has COVID impacted what you do in crime prevention? 
Oh, I would say um, as far as when COVID first hit, um, it was pretty uh, crushing for us because our goal is to get out. Even if I go to Walmart or go out in the communities and sit and engage with people and talk to them, um, that kind of hindered that relationship right there. Um, but we had to get pretty creative. And also we couldn't do one of our biggest programs this past year, which is National Night Out, which brings yeah. about six to 7,000 people. So we normally start planning for that um, in February um, to get prepared for August. So that was probably the biggest impact that we had because we basically have contact with over 150 vendors that like to participate. So building those connections, having those meetings, um, even though you're emailing back and forth, <clears throat> once we have those community meetings, you're getting to know all your neighborhood watch leaders, your business leaders, your community leaders. Um, so that was probably the, the biggest part that we lost this past year with COVID. Um, so we, we, you know, transaction to doing a lot of virtual. Um, and one thing I love about Stafford County, like our, our sheriff's department, is so personal. Like, you know, it's almost like that small town. We are a community of 150,000. But right. if you look at it, we almost feel like we're a community of five because of the relationships that we build. And that's how we basically engage the communities. Um, so again, being able to actually get out, go to the coffee shops, just engage, you know, citizens there, go to the stores. We kind of, you know, haven't been able to do that. Um, so again, this past year, we, we got pretty creative um, and we did some things even with Thanksgiving and Christmas where we were able to go out to the communities um, and just, you know, give out turkey baskets, um, Christmas gifts. So um, and then even our toy drive, you know, again, practicing social distancing, um, we're, we're getting pretty creative, um, which I like. So it's causing us to think outside of the box, but yet still focusing on engaging the community. And you know what was so nice, even though we weren't able to get out there as much as we used to, our community came to us. And it seemed like almost on a daily basis that we had people dropping off food or like during the holidays, they were bringing gifts for the toy drive. Um, and that was so nice to see that community of support throughout the whole year. And uh, that continues even to today. Yeah. And, and Kathy, that's what I love about our community, because that toy drive, it just, just gives me chills because, um, like you say, the community, they came, they were dropping off toys. We basically had a room full of toys where we can go shopping for our kids and basically personalize it for our communities, as well as our seniors, um, being able to reach out to our seniors as well. Um, because a lot of our community, they're isolated now, so they do want to see us. So we're trying to encourage, you know, our deputies to get out more in the communities. Uh, and now is the time for base the community policing where we get outside of our cars and we walk um, because our community does want to see us. Um, right. I know we had one deputy, you know, our family was in need of diapers. We had a partnership with a deputy. Actually, he had started this shift. So he went out and he actually took this two families, you know, diapers that were in need. So that right there is just that, that engagement, you know, it's not about, you know, we can't arrest ourselves out of situations, but, you know, but we can care. So that's part of our community care. And so many of those um, situations you really can't know about until, unless you get out there and you're talking to people or you're talking to their neighbors and they're telling you what's going on next door or down the street. So um, it is so important for us to just be out there in our neighborhoods to see what's going on and to just have conversations with um, people. Exactly. And we even get the phone calls from, um, I know, like I said, make it small, but even the phone calls, you can find yourself on the phone with a senior citizen and they just basically want to talk. And that's one of the advantages that we do have. Um, to right. Now, unfortunately, COVID, um, uh, resulted in some negative situations. Uh, for example, I know that we've had to put out information about um, scams and vehicle break-ins. Can you talk about some of those things that happened um, in the past year? Yes, um, our scams are definitely on the rise. Um, we've, we're seeing basically um, reports on different scams every day from the puppy scam to the romance scam. <clears throat> Excuse me to the um, National Clearinghouse scam, 
Um, and our and it's targeting there. No one's immune from it. We're seeing our, our senior citizens to young adults, basically, that are victims of these scams. And I believe people have more time on their hand. They know people are at home. They know they're isolated. So what we're trying to do basically through social media, um, through our worship watch, through our business watches and neighborhood watches is put this information out so our communities can share so they can share with their family members um, and their senior citizens, because some people, they're afraid to report it because they feel embarrassed by what happened with the scam. Um, but they are true victims. Um, so that's why we're trying to just filter the information out um, the best way we can. So hopefully somebody reads it and then they find somebody that may not be on social media, share that information. Even with the vehicle break-ins, just a reminder to lock your car doors. Unfortunately, and, you know, we have um, criminals out there that are, you know, either, you know, young juveniles, young adults, we have no idea who they are, but they're going into these communities and they're basically car shopping. Mm -hmm. And it's because people are leaving their doors unlocked and we've all done it. I, just right. Yesterday I had to remind my husband, you didn't lock the door. Um, so again, if, you know, it's just a reminder, you know, I know some say we shouldn't have to do that, but yes, you do. You do have to lock up your doors. You do have to lock up your valuables because there are people out there praying on it. And especially now that they know where we're home. Um, so we try to encourage the 9 p.m. routine, just lock your car doors, lock your house doors, you know, garage as well. And we certainly don't want to give them the opportunity and make it easier for them to break in. Exactly. Now, one of the things, too, that um, we have talked about uh, in the past are our safe exchange zones. Um, and I know you put information out about that, but I think also during this time, it's been so helpful to have those here. Can you describe what those are? Our safe exchange zone, basically um, here at the sheriff's office, we have a parking space designated um, for a safe exchange. That's way it, uh, that provides, if you basically buy something on the internet from a stranger, somebody you don't know, um, you can meet them at this location to exchange whatever you're buying or whatever you're selling. Um, I think it's, it's a great place. It's well lit. It's 24 hour surveillance. So if somebody's not willing to meet you here at the sheriff's office, then that should be a sign right there that is probably either a scam or somebody that's, you know, with ill intent um, and, and looking to basically do some type of criminal behavior. So again, I will highly encourage um, all our citizens to use this zone. Um, and it's here at the sheriff's office right in front of the building. Again, well lit, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, you don't have to call a deputy. You can just um, show up at the location. Um, and again, that should be suspect if the person is not willing to meet you here. Right. And there's there's more information about those zones on our website. And uh, I know also that um, social media helps to spread the word about that, the, the uh, safe exchange zones. Yes. So let's go back again to community engagement because recently we put together a special team uh, to address that. And I was hoping that you could talk more about the um, community engagement team that we have now in the sheriff's office. Absolutely. Well, um, our community engagement team actually formed over the summer um, when they started with uh, um, some protests in the area. Um, so the first time the community engagement team was basically before we were formally as community engagement team, we had a protest. Um, so what we did, we got together, there was probably six of us. Um, we dressed down, had the BDU pants and, and the black polo shirts. Um, so we basically set up a tent. Um, we had golf carts, we had water. Um, so we basically provided assistance to the protesters as well as security. Um, but yet we kind of, we engaged the, the, the protesters to make sure they had a safe environment. Um, so that was the first time we did the community engagement team. And then uh, First Sergeant Parsons, he wrote up uh, a basically a policy or, or a plan for our community engagement team. Um, and through that, um, I became the coordinator of the team. And since then, our, our goal is basically to, you know, have events in the community, um, support, um, encourage, um, again, while providing safety and security. But again, that team is basically to engage the communities. Um, and some of the things that we've done is, is with the, like the Thanksgiving, the toy drive, um, as the seniors and Valentine's Day event. Um, so again, and the community, the, the way they accepted the team, they really, you know, 
love this coming out. Um, and the deputies that are involved are just, you know, always smiling, um, always positive, um, and just love working with people. So I think having that light on it um, and just being able to be a part of the community um, is, yeah, I got off track, but <laughs> I get all excited with certain things. So I'm sorry. That's um, okay. <clears throat> but yeah, when our deputies go out, like we have 12, actually we have the 13 people on the team right now. Um, so again, almost since we formed the team every month, um, we've been able to go out and do different activities or the community may ca call us to come out and assist. The last event we did, we helped Stafford Food Security by going out and feeding the homeless. Um, and what was beautiful about that um, once we prepared the, the food, uh, one, me and one of the other deputies, um, we went out to a hotel where some homeless were, uh, were waiting on food. So we roll up in our cars and uh, they see us and they have this look on their face, but I roll up, I pop my trunk and I come out with, hey, anybody, you know, we're here with dinners. So <laughs> again, you know, that just is a totally different message. Just like, right. you know, no, we're not here to arrest, we're here to feed you. Um, so those gentlemen that were standing outside, you know, we got a chance to talk to them, a chance, to, you know, and that's the community engagement part. That's the community care part um, that we do. We, we can't cure it all, but you know what? We can show that we care. And what a great way to build goodwill among all members of the community and also use this as an opportunity to talk to them about what we do as the Stafford Sheriff's Office and talk about their role and maybe how they can help us and partner with us. So I think it's such a great um, way, again, to, to build those partnerships. Yes. Now let's talk about this year and um, hopefully some activities that you have planned that are coming up because with the vaccine rolling out and more people getting them, um, getting it every day, hopefully, um, you know, we'll be able to get out there more safely, of course. Um, what are some of the uh, plans and projects you've got planned for this year? Um, so this year we're going to um, do our national night out, which is normally our biggest event. So right now we're gonna shoot for October, um, the first Tuesday in October to do our national night out. Um, so it may be on a smaller scale, um, but that will probably be one of our biggest event. As far as other events, um, we have our, we partner with Crime Solvers. We do our shred event, you know, twice a year. We will continue to do that. Um, we're looking at doing um, fishing events within the community um, um, for kids and also programs for seniors. Um, so. Um, we even have a triad program that we're hoping to, you know, um, start doing more activities with the seniors um, and do another drive for, you know, um, products or household supplies um, to assist our seniors in the communities. Um, so <clears throat> between that, um, those two things, which are the biggest ones, but the other is just like our, our small events. Um, right now we have our worship watch deputy. He, he's attending a tr different church service every Sunday. Um, so, you know, he could be seen as community, build that relationship. Um, our business watch, you know, we're going to be out in the businesses um, as far as neighborhoods. Um, we're looking forward to, we're putting together a, a plan where we're actually going to be able to go to the communities and have more outdoor activities. So now we're planning more outdoor activities as opposed to if we go to a neighborhood watch or, or homeowners association meeting. We're going to plan to have those in outdoors where we have technology set up where we'll be able to engage the community, do different activities and also activities with the kids. So that's one good thing about COVID instead of looking for those places inside, you know, outdoor movie, um, being able to set up where we can have outdoor movies with the kids um, or just some type of game. So just building that relationship. So I'm really looking forward to that and encouraging neighborhoods to, you know, right now with COVID, if you have a large neighborhood, you may not have the entire neighborhood, but maybe encouraging those, you know, different streets to get to know their neighbors, like block parties. So we're going to be encouraging, like, you know, maybe do the block parties, get to know your neighbors, um, and then we'll be able to come out and assist, you know, as needed. So our goal is to, to get out there and just be more of a face in the community. And I'm sure after being cooped up for almost a year and after our winter, um, you know, spring is also on the way that people are just waiting to get out there and they just can't, you know, they're excited to be out there in the community again and um, hopefully talking to their neighbors and talking with members of the community engagement team as well. Yes. <laughs> well, Sergeant Burgess, is there anything else you'd like to mention? 
about crime prevention or any of the activities you have planned? Um, now, again, like I say, um, we are open to ideas. So for our community, um, if they want to reach out to us, if they have ideas that we can do within the community or assist, uh, we highly encourage our community to reach out to us as well. Um, but our goal is just to be out in the community and having that open line of communication. Um, and also just a reminder with, with the scams out there, um, you know, just remember if somebody calls you and you feel like, you know, they're pressuring you, the gift card scams, I just want to remind, please don't ever purchase gift cards, you know, to pay a bill or anything like that. That is normally a scam. So I would highly advise our residents call us, report it. Um, you can call me and talk to me about it, call our crime prevention unit. Um, but don't ever feel pressured to go and purchase gift cards. Again, that's one of the things I'm seeing is nobody's immune from it. It's targeting our, our senior citizens to our young adults. Um, so just be careful. Again, just contact the sheriff's office. And information um, about crime prevention and all of those safety tips are on our website at staffordsheriff.com. And people can also follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So Sergeant Burgess, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited and I hope that uh, people will see us out there in the community more this year. And uh, I know we're, we can't wait to get out there as well. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Thank you. That wraps up this episode of In the Know with the Stafford SO. Thank you for tuning in and have a safe and wonderful day. Thank you for listening to In the Know with the Stafford SO. This podcast is produced by members of the Sheriff's Office and is one more way we connect with our community. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Visit our website at staffordsheriff.com for details about our social media channels as well as events where you can meet our staff. Thank you for your support.